the cause of samsara. This is at the core of our suffering experience, this belief that we have. It's a belief that, um, you know, for example, about ourselves, the self we normally see is true and real. It really exists. Because of that, and we believe the same about others, you are true, you are real. Because we have this mistaken mind, then anything that appears to us as attractive, we develop the desire to possess it. Anything that appears to us as unattractive, we develop the desire to get rid of it. Uh, and so all of our um, problems develop from this original misconception. So the solution to this is to uh, realize that all the things we normally see, the self we normally see, all the other people we normally see, all phenomena we normally see do not exist at all. They don't exist. So this means realizing emptiness, doesn't it? It means gaining a, what did you say last night, a yogic, a yogic direct perceiver. Seeing directly, seeing clearly, seeing uh, without any doubt the actual reality, the actual nature of all things. And then uh, a con conclusion, or well, one question that came, which was uh, answered by Geshe if if all the things that we normally see do not exist, then how do phenomena exist? How do things exist? And the answer came back, they exist as mere appearances, mere appearances of mind. And the word mere, the word mere in that phrase, mere appearance, is essential because it means uh, an appearance that lacks inherent existence. It's a mere appearance. Mere eliminates any possibilities of things existing from their own side, things existing objectively or independently. An appearance is simply an appearance coming from the mind, an appearance of the mind, an appearance to the mind. So there's nothing behind that appearance. There's nothing inside that appearance. It's just an appearance. And I talked about the um, example of dreams. You know, when we did you have any dreams last night? I had lots of interesting dreams. Um, all of those things, all those people, those places we were dreaming about, we know from our everyday experience. These are simply appearances of our mind. If we dream about, um, I don't know, what did I dream about? I think I dreamt about England last night. I seem to dream about my home country quite a bit. Um, it's obvious, I, I'm, I'm in the United States here, aren't I? So when I wake up in the morning, I don't start looking around in the ground. And going, Where's England gone? It was never here in my dream, just my dream, just an appearance to my mind. So Buddha's using examples like that. He uses also the examples of reflections and illusions. Um, what else? Many, many different types of analogy like rainbows, you know, objects that we know through our everyday experience that appear to us, but they have no substantiality at all. They're simply appearances. A rainbow is simply an appearance. There's no such thing as a rainbow over there. We see the rainbow, oh, a rainbow, a rainbow. No rainbows over there. It's just an appearance to this mind, independence upon the sunlight and the, the rain and the refraction of the rays of the sun through, through the rain and so forth. So what appears to my mind is a rainbow. But for the people over there, there's no rainbow. For the people over there, there's no rainbow. For the people on the far distance, there's no rainbow. It's just people like me in this particular position who can see a rainbow. And as you know, if we go looking for that rainbow, go searching for it, go and try and find it, it disappears. Rainbow disappears completely, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>